Hello everyone. Thank you so much for viewing this video. In fact, this is my first video on YouTube. So today, we are going to discuss Demystified Low Power Wide Area Network, okay, in short, which is called LPWAN. This will be the part one series. Okay, so for this video, I don't foresee you have any difficulties to understand. Okay, but if you have question or you have some doubt, please send an email to me. Okay, I will try my very best to answer all the question. Or if you have any suggestion of topic, okay, please also send email to me. Okay, so let's start. LPWAN stands for Low Power Wide Area Network, which I have mentioned earlier on. Okay, there are three areas that I want to focus for a start. Number one, low power. Number two, wide area. And number three, network. In order to be able to classify under low power, okay, the transmitting power must be less than 25 milliwatt, okay, which is around 14 dBm. Low power also means that the device must be powered by portable battery, like double A, triple A, or even coin size battery. And the battery is expected to last for five years. Hey, can you give me any wireless technology that belongs to low power? Okay, any wireless technology? Okay, we have ZP and we also have BLE. Okay, next, let's move on to white area. Okay, white area means we must be able to send data kilometer away. So in short, okay, in rural environment, the minimum distance is 15 kilometer. In urban, Okay, the range is expected to be in between 2 and 3 km. Okay, again, can you think of any wireless technology that belongs to wide area? Solar, right? So solar also belongs to wide area, but definitely they are not considered as low power. Last but not least, networks. Okay, network means that the device is able to access to the internet. Okay, not one, not 10 but millions of devices access to the internet. Okay, they must not be having any schedule. Okay, so means when the device will be able to so -called access the internet, they must not be any schedule. Okay, so it's also preferred to configure in a star topology. Okay, so simple, this is a star topology here. Okay, Aroha, okay, in simple word means random access. Okay, when the device want to access to the internet, it must be able to assess instantly. Okay, we talk about this device initiate. Okay, I'm not sure whether are you able to recall the master and slave mode, which you have learned in your school days. Basically, the master will be the one that control most of the tasks. Okay, so in this case, the master belongs to the end device and the gateway is the slave. There's something very different. Okay, we talk about this asymmetric link. Okay, before we go to this asymmetric link, let's do a very quick recall what is uplink and downlink. Okay, when the end device has a message to send to the gateway, we call this uplink. Okay, when the gateway has a message to send to the end device, we call this downlink. Asymmetric link okay, means that they don't allocate equal time for both uplink and downlink, which means 50 50. Okay, they don't allocate equal time. Okay, putting all this together is what LPWAN is expected to have. Okay, if any one of these components is missing, okay, you can't classify them as LPWAN. Okay, so what is the motivation of LPWAN? Okay, we have cellular. Okay, we have 2G. Okay, some of the country, no more 2G. Okay, we also have 3G, LT, and recently we have 5G. Okay, but all these are very expensive for IoT application. Okay, some smart developer, basically they start to develop their own communication network in the unlicensed band. Okay, LPWAN, okay, such as Sigfox. Okay, Sigfox is one of the pioneers of LPWAN. Okay, so basically they show that they are able to connect to the actuator and also the sensor to the internet okay, without the use of Wi-Fi or solar. Okay, the licensed solar, solar operator felt threatened. 
Okay, they still remember how WhatsApp take away their overseas call and also the SMS business. Okay, the licensed cellular operator felt threatened and they proposed this LT-M and MBIOT to counter the unlicensed LP WAN. Okay, this slide here shows the characteristics of LP WAN. The okay, LP WAN has low cost. Okay, they have the flexibility to have the scalability. They have low energy consumption and they have a wide coverage. Okay, the cost of the LP WAN device, okay, the end device must be low. Okay, because imagine we are going to deploy millions or even billions of end device. So the cost of the end device must be attractive in order to so-called sustain the success of LP WAN. Okay, so the cost is expected to be very low for the end device. Scalability. Okay, again, you can imagine more and more end device are required to connect to the gateway. And the gateway must be able to sustain this kind of connectivity. Okay, low energy consumption. Okay, I believe you still remember what we have discussed on low power. Low power also means low energy consumption. Okay, and for LP WAN, okay, the battery must be able to last for at least 10 years. Okay, amazing. Even my TV remote control need to be replaced every two or three years. But for LP WAN, the battery lifetime is 10 years. Okay, white coverage. Okay, white coverage means we are able to send data kilometer away. So what happened here is if we are able to send data kilometer away, okay, we can actually reduce the numbers of gateway. And when we are able to reduce the number of gateway, okay, we indirectly reduce the so-called the deployment cost. Okay, so basically this sum up the characteristics of LP WAN. Okay, characteristic of LP WAN, okay, I capture this in a picture way to get your attention. Okay, take note that I never really so-called discuss about this easy deployment. Okay, because I feel that it is very subjective. Okay, some feature comparison. Okay, so this feature comparison is between ZP, okay, which is in green, cellular in red, and LP WAN in blue. Okay, for over here, okay, you can clearly see that LP WAN has the longest range as compared to the other two. Okay, to consume the least power as compared to the other two technology. And the module or the chipset is the lowest as compared to Zigbee and cellular. Okay, however, LP WAN also has the disadvantage. They have the least bandwidth, okay, which means that they can carry the least data. And they have the largest latency, okay, which means that it took the longest time to transmit. Okay, so this slide here shows different wireless technology. The X axis show the range from short range to long range. The Y axis show the bandwidth from low bandwidth to high bandwidth. Low bandwidth means low data, high bandwidth means high data. The why LP WAN is hot is because they uniquely occupy this spot without disturbing the others. Okay, let's go through some of the wireless technology. Okay, we have 2G, we have 3G, we have 4G and 5G here. You can see that every generation, okay, the throughput or the data rate increase. Okay, any one of you know what is the initial proposed frequency of 5G? Okay, it is initial proposed to be 60 gigahertz. So what happened here is with 60 gigahertz high frequency, okay, the range will be reduced. Probably 5G will be occupied this space with 60 gigahertz. So with high frequency and low range, they will surrender the position to LP WAN. So therefore, 3 GPP is not so big. I believe from 5G onward, there will be two bands of frequency. One, we call it a sub-6. Okay, so this band is to remain relevant to fight the LP WAN. While the millimeter wave is the high frequency that is going to ensure high throughput, low latency to support, for example, our autonomous vehicle. Okay, so this is the end of my video. So please subscribe. Thank you so much.